Hey there, my name is Bradley Knapp and I'm one of the product managers here at IBM Cloud. And today we've come together to talk about backup versus disaster recovery. This is a really hot topic and what I want to emphasize more than anything else, if you stop the video right now, these are not the same thing. Please don't treat them that way. Before we get too far into the video though, I do want to encourage you, if this is the kind of thing you'd like to learn more about, please do like and subscribe so that you can get notified as we put new videos out. But with that in mind, let's get into backup versus DR. And so kind of to start out with, I want to talk about some differences, right? So over on this side, we're going to put DR. This is going to be our disaster recovery side. And over on this side, this is where we're going to put backup. These are not the same thing. Now, they have generally similar goals, and their goals are both good things. Their goals are both to protect you in the event of some sort of a failure. Now, what kinds of failures do they protect against? Very different things. So backup, what does, what kind of failure does backup present, protect you against? So it's gonna protect you against, you know, a host failure. So the actual system that you're running, if it goes down, you have a backup. It's not the end of the world. The data is still there. It'll also protect you against some sort of a malicious attack. You know, we'll call that hackers. A very popular attack right now is, is the encryption scheme, right? Where someone will, will compromise access to your system, they'll log into it, they'll run an encryption algorithm, and then they'll send you a demand letter. We're seeing lots of these going against small governments, going against good-sized governments, schools, small businesses, where they get access and then they're going to encrypt your stuff. If you aren't willing to pay the uh, bounty, if you're not willing to pay the ransom, your only option is to restore from backup. And that's okay, that's not a problem because you've, you've done a good job, you've made good backups. And again, so what is backup doing? It is saving you from these kinds of failures. We're gonna call these small scale failures, right? And maybe that's the big one. We're just gonna call them small. Now, if we go over here to our DR side, again, DR is protecting you against a failure, but a disaster recovery scenario is a very different kind of protection. Backup, you wanna backup all of your data, right? You wanna backup everything. Small applications, big applications, development that you're doing, everything should be backed up so that the event of one of these kind of a smaller failure, you don't lose all of the work that you've done. Disaster recovery, not the same thing. Disaster recovery, first of all, is really about production applications, all right? That's one thing, and what does it protect against? Well. So a backup is protecting against a host failure. Over here on the disaster recovery side, this is a whole region failure. So what is a region failure? A region failure would be if wherever your production application is running, you have a natural disaster, right? There's widespread flooding, there's widespread cold, there's widespread uh, a tornado or a hurricane. Something is going to take that entire region offline that's your primary region, that's where you're delivering your service or where your production applications live. You're going to declare a disaster and you're gonna fail over from that primary site to your disaster recovery site. Now, you can do that with backups, it takes a while, it's not a great idea. And so whenever you've got a production application that requires very high availability, right? You can't accept the downtime, your DR site is gonna be set up as a standby. What does this mean? It means that you are constantly streaming production data from your production site over to your DR site. So the amount of downtime that you take that your system is down is relatively low. So if we were to compare these two, you know, a backup is a point in time, right? It is, okay, every night at 2 a.m., my application and data is all going to be backed up and stored in the backup server. Everything that has changed between 2 a.m. this morning and now in the event of a failure, you'll lose it, right? That's how backups work. It's a point in time. Disaster recovery is streaming. And so maybe let's let's call that out, right? Let's let's say that over here, all right, so this is point in time. And on this side, this is that streaming side. All right, well, I guess we've got standby, so streaming. So 
If you're streaming, you're only going to get a little bit of lost data as opposed to this point in time snapshot. So again, it's, it's a much higher availability. It really solves that problem of having minimal downtime, which for production applications is absolutely critical. And when I put standby here, that's you will have a process to programmatically cut over from production to DR. Restoring from a backup is almost always manual. It's almost always done by hand. There are some things that you can do to automate it, but you have to figure out, okay, we've restored from our backup. We then have to check and be sure that the backup restored correctly, that all of the systems connected correctly again, and that we're back up and running again. It's a fairly manual process. Whereas declaring a disaster, failing over should be automatic, right? It should be have as little manual intervention as possible other than someone saying go, someone saying start. Now, that said, backups are good for other things. So let's get our backup color back out here. What advantages do a backup have? Well, it is a point in time. And so one of the nice things about it is that you can restore that anywhere. So if you've got an application or you've got data that you're working on in location A, you can back that up, you can snapshot it, you can move that snapshot over to location B and stand it up over in location B and get it up and running again. This is not a DR scenario. This is purely about moving applications. This is about portability. And so when you're evaluating your backup solutions, this is one of those things you need to be taking in mind. Is this something that I want? Do I want the ability to restore anywhere? Do I want the ability to snapshot? Do I want the ability to clone? And again, backup, Cloning and snapshotting are technologies that kind of fall within the backup piece. But let's go ahead and put them on here because they are important. So when you're in your development and your test process, these are important. You're going to clone data so that you've got a copy of what's going on in production so that you can do development and test against it. You're going to snapshot data so that it could be an application consistent snapshot. It could be a traditional snapshot. But again, it's trying to capture what you're doing in production and then do some development and test on it. This is not a DR kind of a scenario. And many of these tools, people will talk about them as if they are DR tools. Like, oh, we don't need a, a whole disaster recovery site, right? We have a great backup and retention policy. Well, like I said before, the downside in that is backups take a while to stand up. And so if you are trying to use backup for your DR strategy, what you must ask yourself, the most important question is how long can I afford to be down? Because if you're going to measure your downtime, right? We're going to make a downtime distinction here. Downtime for your DR is minimal. Along with data loss being minimal. If your DR strategy is to restore a backup in another location, your downtime isn't going to be minimal. We're going to call it medium. Might be medium, might be high, just depends on how resilient you are, depends on how much automation you've put in place. But really the key for you to take away is the difference between these two is that they have two entirely different use cases, two different goals. And so solving your DR problem can't be done with backups. And DR is not a backup of your production system. You can't just have a DR site and assume that that's good enough. Your DR site should be taking backups of the data that lives within it. So in the event of a huge disaster where your streaming is interrupted or corrupted, you have data that's here, and if you lose, you know, host failures can happen in a DR site just like they can happen in a production site. You have to protect against that. So hopefully that's been helpful, and you can design your strategies in a better way, in a more resilient way, and in a way that solves the needs for you and your business and company. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to share them with us below. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it in the future, please do like the video and subscribe to us so that we'll know to keep creating for you.